Hello, hello to you, my fellow printer dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, where we recently had something called Krampuslauf. If you don't know what that is, you don't want to know. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. All right, as always, we start with what's new in the shop. And recently we added Polymaker's new Fiberon filaments. These are a range of eight fiber filaments. We got PPSCF, PA6, PA12, and PA612 blends with glass fiber and carbon fiber. There is also a PTG carbon fiber too. So we have seen a few new high strength materials out there recently. Bamboo recently released a PPS of their own with super high heat resistance. Polymaker's Fiberon can do something pretty similar with a HDD of 252 degrees at 0.45 megapascals. What is interesting is they also have a PDG ESD filament with carbon nanotubes as the conductive additive. And speaking of nanotechnology in filaments, we also have ProGraphene filament and these use graphene as their fiber additive. I shouldn't say fiber, it's not a fiber. But with the addition of graphene instead of carbon fiber or glass fiber, you can actually print this without a hardened steel nozzle. And with the PLA variety, you can print this at over a thousand millimeters per second. Wow. The PETG variety is not quite as rigid as most PETG CF filaments, but this does look like a great choice for functional prototyping that needs to be printed fast and easily. Uh, like you can print this on pretty much any printer. There's no abrasive resistant nozzle required. There's no special build plate, no heated chamber. Pretty cool. Okay, next up is, oh, okay, well, we got to talk about this. Okay, so some of you might know that there has been a leak for the new Bamboo Lab printer, uh, which is due to be announced sometime in the new year. There is a Reddit post with leaked promotional information about the new printer, which is apparently called the H2D. And there isn't much info, but what we get from this gives us some ideas. So firstly, what is written, the device dimensions. We can gather that this is going to be bigger than the X1C. We all knew that this was going to be the case. Everyone has been asking for it for a long time, but it is the image that is most interesting. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see a print head with dual nozzles. Uh, at first I was like, wait, what? A dual extruder with an AMS? But if we look at Bamboo's patent history, we can see one diagram of an unreleased hub written up about a year ago, and it shows what looks like a standard hub, but with two outputs. This is interesting because this will enable faster color changes because the printer can prep the swap of the film into one channel while the other channel is still printing. It basically takes some of the speed advantage of a tool change but without the expense of four separate tool heads. It's not going to be as quick as a tool changer. Obviously, it still needs to purge filament some of the time, but that's still a time saver. If they did have a way to purge the filament as one nozzle is being printed, so that maybe there's like a catcher underneath the nozzle that collects the filament as it's being purged while the other nozzle is printing, and then when it's doing another color change, uh, the printhead will move to the side and activate the cutter, and while that's happening, the catcher will just dump the purged filament and that way there would be no waiting time for the purges. That would be cool. If they're not doing that, then somebody please do it. That would be nice. We actually had a bunch of leaks and soft announcements recently. I mean, of course we do. This is post Form Next. What else we got? So at Form Next, BTT were displaying their VVD unit, and this is basically an AMS type device, but it's BTT, so it's clipper oriented. You should be able to use it on basically any clipper printer. Uh, other than that, we don't know that much. Launch date is March or April, uh, but I have links below a uh, video from Dr. Clipper uh, where he has some footage of the VVD unit at Form Next. We just have to wait and see how it goes. Creality also had their Ender 5 Max coming out. This is going to be bigger than the K2 Plus. It's 400 by 400, apparently. Uh, again, we just got to wait until the uh, official announcement, but uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's not enclosed, but I, I think you can get an uh, enclosure pack with it. Um, uh, it's big, and the Ender 5 line is, is not dying. It's coming back. Wait. In technology news, we have this new paper released by a team at Johns Hopkins University, uh, which is fascinating. You know the way FDM printers lay down a line of filament and then next to it another line and then above another line? These are all parallel, uh, so there are gaps between those lines of filament. 
And recently there have been a couple of videos on this topic. Most well known would have been CNC Kitchen's video about brick layering. This is where we shift the position of those lines so that they form a brick arrangement instead of completely parallel on top of each other. Uh, and this, this provides extra stability. Well, this team at Johns Hopkins University are using these gaps uh, to their advantage, actually. So what they do is they can extrude a different material between the lines of filament in those gaps, and that way they can change the properties of the finished piece. Maybe you want something really strong, so you can inject a high-strength binder into those gaps or something electrically conductive, so you inject a conductive ink into the gaps. They're basically using this vulnerability as an advantage, and their setup uses a normal 3D printer, but with four additional smaller nozzles that inject the coating into those gaps. The emphasis here is on customizability and versatility rather than high strength. You can customize any material that you're printing with these additives, and that is very interesting. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and products mentioned are down below in the description. We have a community news channel on our Discord server, so if you would like to talk about the stories that we talked about today or suggest your own one for the next community news, you may do so there. We'll be back with a, another video uh, next week, so tune in then if you can. And in closing, dear friends, I leave you with a turtle. Oh, wait. Wrong turtle. This turtle's medical condition might have a funny name, but it's no joke. Charlotte the turtle suffers from a serious and increasingly common syndrome called bubble butt. Since being hit by a boat years ago, Charlotte hasn't been able to swim normally. To help, experts in 3D printing and advanced computational design came together to develop an innovative solution that they hope can be scaled to help turtles around the world suffering from the same condition. Bubble butt is also known as positive buoyancy syndrome, and essentially, when turtles get hit by boats, their shells can deform slightly, and that deformity causes air to get trapped in the back of their shell. So instead of sitting neutrally buoyant like turtles do, they sit with their butts up in the ocean. That can cause some pressure on their organs, it can cause some damage to their GI tracts, and in general, that air in the tract doesn't allow them to function as a normal sea turtle. They work to develop a scan to 3D print workflow that they hope can be refined and replicated for all turtles suffering from bubble butt syndrome. With Charlotte as an early stage adopter of the technology, the team is now looking for help to refine and scale the workflow. The ideal outcome of this project would be to make this technology accessible to other aquariums. So our hope is an aquarium could upload a scan of a turtle, have access to an online design tool, which would allow them to make a few design decisions and export a file which would allow them to build a harness on a fuse and to, again, help to better the quality of life of their turtle.